you attended the meeting on the 19th of April. Yeah. So perhaps you could tell me a bit about what happened to that meeting. I see the first agenda item was the Joint Strategic Needs Assessment. Um, so what was all that about? Okay. Um, well, the, the Joint Strategic Needs Assessment will be key to the development of the Joint Health and Wellbeing Strategy, which is obviously the main task of the board, and brings together basically a, a, a certainly the document is always a strategic summary, bringing together all the key data about the city, uh, Bristol. It was focused on things like population change, um, the economic outlook of the city, uh, as well as children, young people. We've got a sort of this increasing, uh, as we know, young population in, in the city of children. And all these will be have an impact on health in the city. And so it's trying to tease out some of these big trends, if you like, uh, which will impact uh, on uh, what eventually becomes uh, the strategy uh, which the board will produce in due course. So quite a lot of detail in it and uh, that um, uh, document is available I think uh, to, to people so people can, look, can have a, uh, a look at some of the detail in that um, but again trying to give a flavour uh, of some of the themes in the city affecting different parts of the population. Right. And there were some early stages discussions about the, the strategy development, uh, about, as you say, developing the, the joint health and wellbeing uh, strategy, which will come into play next year, I believe. So there's a, a fair long lead into this one. Was, was there anything around that you'd, li you'd like to share with us? Um, I, I think that, uh, again, I think one of, this feeds into really to the the board as a whole trying to find its way a bit and finding the right structures to take things forward. Yes, obviously producing the strategy is, is, you know, is the main driver, um, but easier said than done in, in some, some ways in ensuring that it does actually um, represent a consensus, if you like, all the different parties involved. And I think the board is still very much finding its feet and uh, trying to uh, begin to think about the sort of structures it's going to need to produce the strategy, to feed mm. into that strategy. As I say, what we had in this in the GSNA uh, uh, strategic summary was basically public health um, uh, analysis of trends in the city. Yeah. Um, and obviously the, 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 the final strategy will be a lot more than just data. It will be actually looking at that data and trying to make some decisions about and, and what do we do about it. How do we actually um, influence uh, the, the, uh, the trends we see in the right direction in promoting uh, the health of the, of the city. And I guess it's going to be the street key strategic document for clinical commissioning for the future. Well, well, interesting. I think you know. I think theoretically, but obviously, again, the clinical commissioning groups are all sort of settling down still with all the with the health and wellbeing, uh, well, the health and, and social care bill having just gone through. Yeah. Um, we're still seeing emerging uh, trends around that. But certainly, there's quite you know there's an engagement and uh, uh, from the clinical commissioning groups. And uh, but we, yeah, we wait to see what the interface will be. Yeah, that'll be an interesting one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Um, next on the agenda item was uh, opportunities for greater inter integration. You'd had an away day, um, I think, in in March that, that looked at that. Would yeah. you like to say a little bit about that one? Yeah, so, uh, well, I think, uh, again, this is very much uh, goes back to the um, role of the board, how much it will purely be strategic and how much it will be more operational or more active, if you like, in influencing some of the existing uh, established departments and the way they work and the way they make decisions. And I think um, uh, at the moment, you know, government has a view of the, uh, the health and wellbeing boards as, as providing systems leadership. And uh, sort of very new, new terms, I suppose, and it's just what that actually means in practice. And certainly in uh, Bristol, the view is that it's, uh, as opposed to some other places where they're far more operate, I don't have much more operational impact. Um, in Bristol, it's going to be a strategic body, um, but there will be opportunities. Uh, it's envisaged where um, operationally, the health and wellbeing board could get involved to look particularly at where. Uh, a joint commissioned approach could be more effective and more cost effective, efficient and effective uh, in particular cases. Now, 
what the extent of that will be remains to be seen. But it's not seen to be a major area, but there will be examples where it can bring its influence to bear on commissioning, mm. to join things up, again, for the benefit uh, of the, the, the city in terms of making cost savings and making things more efficient. Great. Uh, and you also had a discussion on how to work on wider determinants of health. Uh, and the work programme of Health Improvement Partnership. Perhaps you could just uh, explain to me a little bit about what you mean by wider determinants. Okay. Well, this is very much a, something that came out of the Marmot re report, uh, that basically health isn't, all, isn't just about individual health. Um, isn't about just what people people take to, to, to their doctors. You know, it is about the environment in which we live. It's about some of the major uh, I factors in our lives, such as uh, the house, our homes we, we live in, mm. the environment immediately around us, uh, our places of work, and so forth. Um, and, and it's looking at how those other issues, if you like, which often are not regarded as health determinants in themselves, mm. um, actually do come together as part of the work of the Health and, and Wellbeing Board um, uh, and just how, yeah, how it can begin to tackle those things, how it can interact with mm. the other all bodies, the other groups that are meeting mm. to discuss some of these things who don't necessarily see them in the context of health. Oh. So it's, uh, so we, ha we had a paper from, uh, from Nick Hooper, who's the uh, strategic a director for housing who'd been asked because of his expertise to pull a paper together to look at these things and um, and again I think from that that paper uh, it provoked a lot of thought but these are big issues you know this is uh, big stuff and and it's again the group needs more time to, re to, to work out how in fact it can make it have an impact on that. Yeah. There has been discussions about potential of having uh, some sort of subgroup, either a short life group or a subgroup of the Health and Wellbeing Board, which would look at these issues, mm -hmm. just begin to tease them out, to feed them into the strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, that hasn't been finalised yet. Mm -hmm. And again, I think going back to the how the board will produce the strategy and how much it will rely either on an existing groups or existing structures to feed into it, or to what extent it will set up new groups. Yeah. to do that, working groups or longer term groups, but that still remains to be decided. That's going to be a real challenge for health practitioners throughout the structure to take on that broader and more holistic approach of health and I, I think that's been one of the thrusts of the, of the new legislation but now we're moving on to actually seeing how that, that huge challenge can actually unfold for the better, so I think that's going to be a real challenge for the board on, on, in the future. Well, I think, I think it's, the potential impact is great, you know, one of the papers they talk about GP's social prescribing Fantastic. You know, which is, well, yes, it's, yeah. this is going to be something really new yeah. and innovative. Yeah. And I think, yes, it makes sense. Yeah. You know, but it means that, that GPs and others embracing a much broader view of yes, health. Sure. Uh, and others taking that on as well for it to make yeah. a real difference. Yeah. It's exciting stuff for the future, I think. Well, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to add about the board meeting in um, April? Uh, well, the only one thing, the other thing, we, there is a existing a group that's been meeting, and in fact, in the past, it used to be called um, uh, the Health and Wellbeing Board itself, but it's now changed its, uh, or recently changed its name to the Health Improvement Partnership, and that is a group that's been meeting for some time with quite a few people engaged in operational uh, activities. Um, it's chaired by Rachel Robinson from the Care Forum. And there was discussion about whether that group should continue or not. And again, it wasn't resolved. I think the recognition of the value of that group was clearly um, uh, acknowledged at the meeting. But again, how it fits into the future life of the Health and Wellbeing Board uh, remains to be seen. Obviously, since the meeting, we've had the decision about uh, that Bristol will have an elected mayor. And the elected mayor, again, could have quite an impact on the makeup of the Health and Wellbeing Board. The, it's within the uh, remit of the mayor to decide who sits on the board mm. and uh, and exactly what the board will do. Uh, so whether it continues as we have discussed as in its strate strategic role or whether the mayor will have a different view about what it should be doing. Well, that's all up in the air at the moment. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much indeed, Peter. Okay.